This is the Kay and Burton Report. Hello and welcome, I'm Tracy Atkins. Well, it's been a scorcher of a few weeks in Melbourne and I'm not just talking about the weather. Kay and Burton, in the normal January hiatus, has delivered a string of top-end results of significant homes, two of them above $10 million. And like I said, it's January, and normally no one's transacting real estate in town. But the real trend that's emerging here is that most of the buyers have been new to the market. And that's set to add a whole new layer of depth as we head into what looks like being an extraordinary autumn selling season. If January was supposed to be a holiday month, then someone forgot to tell the Melbourne real estate market. Homes and significant ones have been snapped up in recent weeks. 34 Hopeton Road, Turak, the penthouse at 32 to 36 to Main Street, South Yarra, 17 Chesselton Avenue and 4 Grong Grong Court, Turak. Just a snapshot of the quality city stock snared by what Kay and Burton describes as a new wave of buyers. We had uh, two sales, in fact, over 10 million in January. Um, Hopeton Road Interact, which we campaigned late last year, we transacted uh, uh, in the in the heatwave week in January, and also another big home Interact, we sold for over 10 million. So that was a very encouraging uh, start to the year. Strong January, our biggest for 90 years. We predicted it. Overseas markets, local markets have kicked in. Confidence has kicked in going very well. Look, over the last 12 months we've in fact transacted a, a, a house in excess of 10 million every month. We've sold 12 in the last 12 months, which is, uh, you know, just purely a supply and demand situation. A feature of this wave of inquiry, a sharp spike in offshore buyers. Analysts and agents alike agreeing the weaker Aussie dollar is coming into play. The lower dollar is set to encourage offshore money into uh, what is a vigorous uh, prosperity housing market in Melbourne at the moment. So they're coming in with whether it's pounds uh, and really against the pound we've really been smashed so um, it's great value if you've got pounds coming in. Um, US dollars of course you're getting a discount and the euro we're, we're well down against the euro you know it's about 65 cents we were 80 cents so they're, they're massive uh, numbers. Isolating any real hotspots at the moment is difficult as agents report the demand is broad, though Armadale has produced a couple of campaigns that are off the charts in terms of demand. 38 Lambeth Avenue Armadale drew 42 groups on its first week and another 22 last Saturday at its second outing. Meanwhile, nearby in Elm Grove, a whopping 46 groups braved the plus 40 degree temperatures on Saturday to inspect this similarly appealing family home. Also trending in Turak, two homes in Kuyong Road and the sleek 49 Fairbairn Road, while 9 Stradbroke Avenue had circa 25 groups through on the weekend, virtually unheard of for a home being quoted at $7 million plus. It was 40 degrees, um, which is quite staggering. Yeah. And it's not just in town that the demand is strong. Gowan Stubbings has been sitting across the Flinders office for the summer months and says transactions there are setting new benchmarks. We've always used the peninsula as a barometer. Typically we'll know that if there's good activity down there, it'll flow into Melbourne proper in the new year. And that's exactly what we're saying. All this early demand paves the way for what will undoubtedly be a robust auction season. Kay and Burton's auction calendar is filling fast from early March and beyond as the footpaths of Melbourne prepare to host what could be an autumn where the sold stickers are going up as fast as the leaves are coming down. So look, the signs are good. Uh, we're coming from a good base, from a solid rising base last year. Enthusiasm's there. Confidence is back in town. So all signs point to another good year for Melbourne Prestige Property in 2014. The Key and Burton Report, proudly partnering with NAP Business Banking. To subscribe, go to keyburtonreport.com. Jared Haberfield, architect at large for the Kay and Burton Report. Thank you for joining us today at 46 Canberra Road, Turak, which I might say has had quite the rejuvenation. This property's had an amazing rejuvenation, and that's thanks to a very light-handed renovation by an architect whose work I admire a great deal, Alario Cortese is his name. He's inherited a Wayne Gillespie building. Alario has come in here and responded to 
all of the best parts of the building and brought those into the current time. The way that the joinery has been dealt with and a whole lot of um, ancillary rooms that again wouldn't have been required historically. All of those things have been brought into this house so that it feels like it's a, like it's a current and newly completed building, but it's also got all of this heritage. The most surprising thing about this house is the view that you get when you've walked up the stairs. I've been here in the morning where the light is just catching the water and of course you see all of the rowers in silhouette. It still feels like maybe it's the original and maybe no one's been involved and that when it was done 20 years ago that it was just done with a lot of foresight. I think that meshing of the, um, the history and the timelessness with all of that um, the modern amenity and, and the functionality that we demand from houses now, that's the, that's the great success of this, of this property. Walsh Street South Yarra needs little introduction as the location of some of Melbourne's most significant real estate, but there's a new arrival on this venerable boulevard that is set to change the hierarchy of the boutique apartment scene. 131 Walsh Street is a creative collaboration from establishment design house Car Design, the revered Sue Carr herself headlining interiors and bringing internationally significant architect Chris McHugh in to draft a blueprint for what is destined to be one of Melbourne's new prestige landmarks. I guess the briefing at the first instance was to create four boutique residences. They each have their own lift and uh, their three bedroom all ensuite with fantastic living spaces. And being in, in this location, there's fantastic opportunity to capitalise on private open space, connection to gardens and, and views towards the city. McHugh brings an inspired and covetable mix of international experience to 131 Wall Street. With a genuine love and true understanding of contemporary architecture, his insight and exceptional skills have been instrumental in high-end design projects in London, Italy, Japan and Hong Kong. Well, I think doing uh, high-end residential work in London taught me a, a number of lessons about amenity and, and scale of space and proportion of space that was was critical. Equally, the experience of Tokyo and, and Hong Kong uh, taught me about inefficiency of space, and so there's no wasted space. Considerable thought has also been invested into understanding and then matching buyers' expectations. We tried to define what the buyer profile will be, and whether it's empty nesters or professionals, uh, and so there's a mix of accommodation in the development. I think each of the four are quite unique in that way. With an international finance executive and a graduate of one of the world's finest interior design schools as its owners, it's hardly surprising the 220 Kuyong Road Turak is a sound investment in style and substance. Alan Griffiths, who headed up Aviva in Southeast Asia, and Gillian, a graduate of the renowned Raffles School of Interior Design, have spent the past two years in Singapore and have combined that exposure with the flair of architect David Edelman to oversee a fabulous rework at their home of 11 years. From the sophisticated and intimate formal areas to the light-filled open casual zones, the home is genuinely world-class, highlighted by stunning fixtures and fittings and an incredible lighting collection. Two very sharp executive studies are found en route to a further two floors of superb accommodation, the first boasting two well-appointed bedrooms with shared balconies, and above that a grand main bedroom suite with every amenity and stunning far-reaching views. Life after football is going very nicely, thank you for former Geelong player Will Slade, who has produced what we think is one of the sharpest new properties going round. Along with his half-brother, Collingwood star Ben Sinclair, Will's formed the development firm Rock Projects, and their first offering at 49 Fairbairn Road, Turak, is a pretty impressive start. The home was designed to be Will's own home, but now Rock is exploring work in the UK, so the home is on the market. The pair teamed up with talented architect Charles Inglis to produce this very sleek two-storey, three-bedroom townhouse, which has managed to deliver some very designed Ford features without compromising on the relaxed and spacious look and feel. And the Big Apple is calling, so this couple is selling their peach of a home in South Yarra. 
Rupert Dowd, owner of Eco Timbers and Tectonic Flooring, and Kate, the general manager of marketing at Asahi, had spent the past three and a half years reworking this residence at 35 Davis Avenue from three units back into one fabulous home. The result is smashing, with lovely light-filled living zones, open Italian kitchens, side terrace and a rear yard headlining a long list of very appealing features. Rupert's company has just picked up several contracts with major hotel groups in New York, hence the move, so we think there's a fair chance the floors are pretty good too.